welcome 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 i am so happy to have you here in my kitchen and if you haven't done so already please go ahead and turn that red subscribe button gray because we would love to have you as part of our family if you like this video go ahead and smash that thumbs up for me just to let us know how you feel about the video today we are going to be making peach cobbler yes homemade peach cobbler and if you have any peach cobbler recipes that you may have acquired over the years let us know down in the comments and definitely be sure to let us know what your favorite part of the recipe is i know that sounds a bit daunting because when you think about peach cobbler you think about how people are probably in the kitchen and there's flour everywhere well that will not be the case here because i am going to show you all a very easy recipe that anyone can can bake as long as you have the right ingredients and it will not take all day so if that sounds like something that you are interested in keep watching <music> peach cobbler without the peaches. So what we're gonna be using with this recipe are frozen peaches, and this is about two pounds of frozen peaches. We'll then use one and a half cups of white granulated sugar and three tablespoons of light brown sugar. One cup of buttermilk and half a cup of whole milk. One cup of water. One cup of self-rising flour one stick of butter or eight tablespoons of butter, two teaspoons of cinnamon, one half teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and two teaspoons of white granulated sugar mixed together, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of vanilla essence or vanilla extract, and three tablespoons of lemon juice an additional bowl for mixing the batter, and a nine by 13 pan. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to melt the butter. So we're gonna go ahead and just drop the butter into the pan just like so. And now the pan is gonna go directly into the oven at 350 degrees. And all we wanna do with the butter is melt it down completely. So now we will take the peaches and go ahead and mix them up. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your peaches as well as those three tablespoons of lemon juice and you're going to just go ahead and just pour it into the peaches. Now you wanna be sure that your peaches are remain frozen. Um, it's very important that they remain frozen and we're just gonna go ahead and just mix that up. You don't wanna thaw your peaches out. You wanna keep them nice and firm. Um, until we put them in the, in the pot and boil them. So once you have that all mixed up, we're gonna go ahead and transfer it to the pot and then we'll add in the other ingredients. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and transfer the peaches into the pot and I have the stove on medium heat. So you want to be sure that the peaches don't cook too long, just long enough to melt the sugar and get all of the ingredients pretty much absorbed. So now that we have the peaches in the pot, we're going to go ahead and add the other ingredients. Cup of water, teaspoon of cinnamon, three teaspoons of light brown sugar, and that half a cup of white granulated sugar. So we're just gonna pour it all in. And we're just gonna mix the ingredients. Now, the important thing to note here is, is that you don't want to cook the peaches. You simply just want to warm them up. Okay, so it's all mixed and we're just gonna let that heat up 
for a little bit. Again, you don't wanna cook the peaches because they're gonna cook in the oven already after we get the batter made and we assemble it with the batter. So we're just gonna let that warm up and let all of the solids dissolve. The butter should be done already. So now we're gonna go ahead and take it out of the oven. Nice and melted. So that's how we want it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and make the batter. But first what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and incorporate our dry ingredients first. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with that one cup of flour, that self-rising flour that we have. We just drop it on in. One cup of white granulated sugar. And just drop it on in there. One teaspoon of cinnamon. That one fourth or quarter of a teaspoon of salt one half teaspoon of nutmeg and one quarter teaspoon of baking powder all right and so we're just going to mix those together all right so it's nicely mixed we're gonna go ahead and start off with one cup of buttermilk. Now the thing about buttermilk is buttermilk will um, really thicken up the batter. So you always wanna follow up with, and we're just gonna mix that, we're gonna mix that together. And as you can see, I am not using a um, automatic mixer. I'm not using a hand mixer, I'm just using this because this is what we want. We want to have clumps in our batter. We want the clumps in our batter, okay? All right, so it's all mixed up and you can see how thick it is. So this is not the consistency that we're going for. And that's why I like to always follow up with um, whole milk or water. Um, you can use either one. I just chose whole milk for this recipe. And so I have my half cup of whole milk and I'm going to incorporate it slowly because I want to make sure that it's not too runny um, and I don't want it to be this thick. So we're just going to incorporate slowly. Just going to incorporate it nice and slow. And then I'll show you guys, I'll show you all the consistency that we're looking for. You may or may not use all of the milk. All right, so it's still a little thick. I want it to be a little bit thinner. Okay, a little bit thinner, so we're just gonna add some more. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it. If you want, you can use 2% milk. It's totally up to you. Um, if you wanna use 2% milk, if you wanna use fat-free milk, you can use fat-free buttermilk. It's totally up to you. And you don't have to use buttermilk. I prefer buttermilk because it makes the crust um, a lot more flakier. All right, so we're getting there, guys. I want it to be a little bit thinner. It's pretty thin, but I want it to be a little bit thinner. A little bit thinner. So we're going to add the rest of the milk. Going to get that all mixed in. And that's what I'm looking for. Very thin, very thin. You don't want it to be too thick because if it's too thick, it'll your batter will come out bread-like, really thick and bread-like, you know, and I don't like it when it's that big. If you want it like that bread-like consistency, you can definitely cut back on the amount of milk or water that you add to it. It's totally up to you. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and add that one teaspoon of vanilla essence. And as you can see, I waited until the very end to incorporate that because it just mixes a lot better. All right, so it's nicely mixed. So now we're gonna take that melted butter that we have in our pan, and you wanna be careful because the pan may still be a little bit warm. And we're gonna take our batter mixture that we just mixed together, and you're just gonna simply pour it right into the pan. You want it to fall where it falls. You want it to fall where it falls. You don't want to mix anything. So let it stay, all right? So the peaches are all nice and warmed up. They're still pretty formed, but they're nice and warmed up. 
and all of the sugars have completely dissolved. So now we're gonna go ahead and transfer the peaches to our pan. All right, so you wanna make sure that you spoon in the peaches. You don't wanna just pour because that will splatter and cause issues. So you just wanna incorporate them all over the batter. So what you have left in the pot, you just pour on top. And while it's in the oven, it's gonna thicken up. You wanna let it stay as natural as possible. You don't wanna stir it up at all. Um, you just wanna just let it stay like that. And when it, once it's in the oven, it's gonna just rise and oh my goodness. So lastly, we're gonna take our cinnamon and sugar mixture that we prepared um, earlier. And what you're gonna do is just sprinkle it on top. Just gonna sprinkle it on top and it's gonna give it that nice, sweet cinnamon and sugar coating to it. All right? All righty. So now we're gonna transfer this to the oven on 350 degrees and we're gonna let it stay in the oven between 30 minutes and one hour. So you definitely wanna eyeball it, keep your eye on it. I like to keep it in up to one hour because it gives the crust a really, really crunchy consistency on the top, which is what I like. If you're not into that really crunchy um, top consistency, you can definitely take it out a lot sooner. So our peach cobbler is in the oven. We are gonna wait for it. You wanna make sure when you do put it in the oven, you wanna put it on the center rack so that it cooks nice and evenly. So we're just gonna wait and then once this baby is done, we are gonna pull it out of the oven and see the beauty of it. All right, I'll see you guys in just a minute. So now we're going to take the peach cobbler out of the oven. I actually have burgers frying on the stove, so that's what you hear in the background. We're gonna have french fries and burgers for dinner, and then peach cobbler for dessert. So, let's get it out of the oven. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Look, oh my goodness. Ugh. Oh my goodness. It's a beauty. <laughs> it's a beauty. Let's get a close up. Look at all that goodness. Look at all that goodness. Look at the crust. It's perfect, guys. It's absolutely perfect. You can see how the crust is nice and crusty around the edges. Y'all, it's still, you all, it is still so hot. It's bubbling still. Oh my goodness. It's a peach cobbler. Homemade peach cobbler using frozen peaches frozen peaches guys and did I mention you can also use canned peaches you can use fresh peaches it's totally up to you and you can make an amazing peach cobbler it doesn't matter which you use it's going to come out great especially if you follow this recipe all right so now we are going to cut this thing open and we're going to top it off with some I don't have any vanilla ice cream but I do have some butter pecan, which is one of my favorites. Yeah. Butter pecan and peach cobbler. Mm. Let's dig into it. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. goodness oh my goodness I will give y'all the first bite there you go mm. Mm. 
so good. You have the tartness of the lemon juice, the sweetness of the brown sugar and cinnamon. Oh. You gotta make it. Make it. You know, when this whole coronavirus thing blows over, because it will, be sure to make yourself some homemade peach cobbler and take it over to your families when you guys celebrate coming back together. Mm. I assure you, you're gonna be the talk of the family in a good way. Mm -mm -mm. So delicious. So easy, so delicious, so easy. It's so good. You better get your song. You better get your song. I'm telling you, you better get your song. Get your song. Hopefully you can find some inspiration by our recipe. And if you have any special recipes or different ways that you make your peach cobbler, we'd love to hear about it definitely down in the comments below. So please let us know. If you haven't become a member of the Crockett Way, we'd love to have you. All you need to do is press that join button and we would be glad to bring you into the fold of our family. And also, if you have not checked out our merch store on Teespring, the links are right there in the description. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and smash that thumbs up by giving us a like. Leave a comment down below letting us know what your favorite part was in the video. And also be sure to share us out and tell your friends about us. Y'all, I'm trying to close out my video, but he over here pouring Kool-Aid. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye. much for hanging out with me here at the Crockett Way. I hope you guys found some ideas about how we how we make our peach cobbler here at the Crockett Way. If you have any ideas or if you do a little bit of improv imp Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me here at the Crockett Way. I hope that you were inspired in some way by our recipe and hopefully you can find some Hopefully you can find some inspiration by Ira. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and were able to find So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and were able to find some insights on how we make our peach cob cob So the rest of the the list the recipe is right there in the description if you want to go if you and also, all of the, the whole recipe, the entire recipe is also in the description if you want to try this yourself. Mm. If you do any improvisations with your recipe, stop looking at me though. Stay safe, y'all. Bye.